Hey, how's it going guys and welcome back. With Coromon's release on the horizon, I figured now would be as good a time as any to discuss which starter I think is the best for the full version of the game. Seeing as you can play the first chapter via the demo on Steam, this should help you pick which one you're going to play through with the demo until full launch does happen on the 31st. Because if you didn't know, your demo save will carry over to the Steam version at the very least. That said, I've played through the game multiple times at this point, utilizing different starters, and while I will say Coromon does a great job at keeping all three pretty balanced, there's one that I think shines above the others in terms of how good it is. By the way, we're not talking about designs, but rather how strong it is. Anyways, all that said, make sure to sit back, relax, and let's dive in. Okay, so anyone that's watched my channel for a while knows that I'm a no-nonsense kind of guy when it comes to how these specific videos are presented, so I'll give a brief explanation on the three different starter roles. You can check out this video for more information on the starters as a whole, and then I'm going to tell you who I think is the best and why. The fire starter Taruga is focused primarily on attacking, with it being a fast sweeper of sorts. The water starter Nibblegar is focused on being a wall, and finally the ice starter Cub Zero is a mix of the two, making sort of a hard-hitting tank. Ultimately, which one is the best for you is going to depend on your playstyle, but I've personally found that the Cub Zero line is the strongest for a playthrough, and we're going to explain why here. Also, let me know if you'd like me to analyze the other two starters in their own individual videos like I'm about to do with the Cub Zero line, because I think that could be a lot of fun as well. Anyways, firstly, let's look at the stat spread of its final evolution here. So as you can see from the spread, it is very balanced, which makes it very easy to place on any team. Also of note is that being an ice type in Coralmon is very different from Pokemon. In Pokemon, Ice defensively is probably the worst type in the game, only resisting itself and being weak to a ton of common attacking types, making Ice types that are meant to fill a tanky role generally quite bad. However, in Coromon, the Ice type is actually good both offensively and defensively, and dare I say, quite balanced as a typing. It's only weak to Fire and Heavy, and only Fire can actually receive type proficiency, which is the Coromon equivalent to Stab or same type attack bonus, since Heavy is a skill only type. Furthermore, Ice hits every type other than itself, and fire for neutral damage while hitting water for times two. It also takes reduced damage from ice, water, air, and poison, making it nothing to scoff at defensively and dangerous offensively to most types with it, at least dealing neutral damage to almost everything. Kind of reminds me of the dragon type. On top of this, the Cub Zero line gets some really interesting moves, making it useful for utility, all-out offense, or just tankiness. It has great coverage with the move Splash, a water type skill that always hits for the enemy's level in damage. Now to surface level, this might kind of sound like Seismic Toss, but worse, but no. Splash also takes into consideration type effectiveness, critical hits, and type proficiencies, though that last one isn't really relevant here. This means that it can hit fire and sand types for massive set damage, plus it can use this move to break through otherwise tanky Coromon that are too defensive. It does have some issues with other ice types, as both both ice and water are resisted. However, it does get access to a really good normal move called Beat Up, which hits multiple times, once at a minimum, then an additional time for every fainted Coromon maxing at six hits. This makes it have a very interesting set, which allows the player to support it with the help of its team and bring it out at the end to devastate an already beaten up foe. But again, this line is super versatile, meaning that you don't have to run it a specific way. Maybe you want to use it as a utility and have it cripple your foe. You can do this as well. Static Fur is an excellent move, which will punish your opponent for using contact moves by paralyzing them for five turns after you've used it. In game, the AI seems to just go for it anyway, so it's definitely good to use. It also gets access to the move Revenge, which does more damage the lower your HP is, Glacier, which has a 15% chance to freeze, Inner Peace, which is sort of like Calm Mind from Pokemon, raising special attack and special defense by one stage, Frigid Barrier, which halves the damage taken from special attacks for four rounds, and even Avalanche, a 110 base power move that has a 25% chance to cause bleed to your opponent. So just by that, you could see that the Cub Zero line has a lot of capabilities, whether you want to run a physical or special tank, use it as a utility, a mixed attacker, etc. You have these options, which makes me believe it's a very good pick for most playstyles. 
In terms of enemies you'll encounter, the game is separated into six distinct biomes, each being heavily populated by the Titan type present. First, you have Electric, which Cub Zero's high attack definitely helps with some of the more frail Electric types on the way. You have Ghost, which is pretty neutral against it. Sand, which Splash absolutely decimates. Fire, which, yeah, it's weak too, but you can have some clutch plays using Splash, especially on already damaged enemies that it outspeeds and sort of wants to clean up. The Ice Zone is definitely a bit of a drag, not because Burialis has really any issues winning the battles, but more so just because its best moves are resisted, so battles might take a little longer. Longer. The water zone is an absolute cakewalk, and while the endgame fight, which I won't show here, is difficult for any type of Coromon, Burial is still put in the work. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for the video. I do think that the Ice type in Coromon is both great offensively and defensively, and that the Cub Zero line really does fill the shoes it's meant to by being the more balanced starter, and in my opinion, the strongest. Like I said earlier in the video, definitely let me know if you want to see a video breaking down the fire and water starters respectively, or any other Coromon videos that you want to see in the future. I'm super excited to keep pumping out these videos for you guys, and I'm having a blast doing so. That said, if you are a fan of Coromon or the monster taming community that surrounds it, definitely subscribe to the channel because I'm putting out new videos every single day. The next two weeks, it's pretty much going to be three videos a day, so lots of content for you guys. Anyways, I will see you guys next time. Peace out.